In this episode, we will talk about space tourism and the man who is set to become the first Indian to venture to space since Rakesh Sharma. We will also talk about the Sam Petroda controversy and how the Congress has reacted to it. But first, we will talk about the case against Patanjali. Hi, I am Niharika Nanda and you are listening to 3 Things, the Indian Express news show. Now back in August 2022 the Indian Medical Association had filed a petition in the Supreme Court against Patanjali after it had published an advertisement that said quote Save yourself and the country from the misconceptions spread by the pharma and medical industry unquote The association claimed that Patanjali's attacks against modern medicine are coupled with Patanjali's own false and baseless claims about curing certain diseases using Patanjali's products Now the court had taken a strong stance against the company and in November of last year it even instructed Patanjali to stop misleading advertisements against the modern system of medicine. However, the very next day Ramdev and the company's managing director Acharya Balakrishna had a press conference in which they claimed that Patanjali had permanent cures for glaucoma, blood pressure, arthritis, asthma and diabetes. Since then both Ramdev and Balakrishna have offered an apology. but the court earlier this month refused to accept it and so the firm issued another unconditional apology in newspapers yesterday and this time it was a little more prominent now to know more about the case we revisit a conversation we had with indian express's apurva vishwanath earlier this month apurva can you begin by sharing with us what exactly has patanjali been accused of So this is a case where the Indian Medical Association which is a group of doctors who went to the Supreme Court saying that Patanjali had been issuing misleading advertisements and also making disparaging statements on allopathy or science backed medicine their concern was essentially that it is a continuous systematic and unabated spread of misinformation especially during the covid pandemic so indian medical association's plea is pretty much that patanjali should be stopped from making these advertisements and there is no check on these advertisements so it's a, essentially a writ petition that is filed before the supreme court and the court has been hearing this case since early 2022 it's gone before different benches first started with the chief justices bench when justice n v ramana was the chief justice so after that it's moved to other benches and other courts finally a bench headed by justice hima kohli heard this case and said patanjali should be stopped from making these statements and also pulled up the government of india on its role in regulating false advertisement now the allegations are that patanjali's advertisements violated the drug and magic remedies objectionable advertisements act can you talk about the act and in what way the petitioners claim patanjali has violated it see for example one of the advertisements which the ima flagged to the supreme court and this is something that was also discussed in court during the course of the case so in july 2022 patanjali had a half page advertisement titled misconception spread by allopathy and it said quote save yourself and the country from the misconceptions spread by pharma and medical industry unquote so these are the kind of advertisements that the petitioners are flagging to the court and this is where the drugs and magic remedies act comes into place this is a 1954 legislation essentially this law seeks to control the advertisement of drugs and prohibit the advertisement which basically say that this drug possesses magic qualities and it can cure anything and everything so to provide a standard of regulation for advertisements when it comes to drugs that's why the phrase magic remedies in the act there are no magic remedies so the drug has to specifically state what it can do what it cannot do what are the risk factors so pharma advertising is fairly regulated so which is why even when you see ads on tv by major pharma companies they come with caveats and they also come with these lines which say these have to be prescribed by a doctor there are some drugs which cannot be brought over the counter and advertisements have to say that specifically so in the case of patanjali during covid it was being advertised as if it is you know a cure in itself in fact the delhi high court also heard a case where the issue was essentially that baba ramdev had made statements that joe biden got covid despite taking allopathic medicines and ergo allopathic medicines don't work for covid right in fact the delhi high court at that time had orally remarked that this could even end up being a diplomatic incident and you know the yoga guru should not be making such statements so the supreme court's hearing is centered around this false advertisement 
And Apoorva, can you also talk about what other laws stop companies from making fraudulent claims? Of course, there is the Advertising Standards Council of India, which will have to evaluate all these ads and, you know, issue directions. That is an industry body, which is basically self-regulation, right? Apart from that, the government would intervene if there are situations like these. And that is, in fact, what the court is now questioning. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appeared for the union and the court was asking what the government did when all of this false advertising was happening by Patanjali. So here, you know, the court was not pleased that the government hasn't done anything about this. It, in a sense, points to inaction and a tacit permission by the government for Patanjali to do what they did. And now that in the next hearing will have to be heard again because the union has now filed an affidavit before the court on what this is supposed to be. In fact, there is a government committee's report which clearly stated that at best Patanjali's prescription for COVID can be a addition to the existing treatment plan that is medically scientifically advocated, that it in itself cannot be prescribed. So the court was asking this question that when the government's own committee is saying that at best Patanjali can only be an addition, why was the government allowing advertisement like this? So what orders has the court so far given to Patanjali? So first, a bench headed by Justice Asanuddin Amanullah had said that this disparaging false advertisement had to stop. So which meant Patanjali had to essentially take off their billboards and, you know, other signs that they had put up, especially where they call allopathy, quote unquote, a stupid and bankrupt signs. So there have been a lot of these statements where Patanjali is essentially saying that allopathy doesn't work or, you know, people should not be taking allopathic medicine, even on things like diabetes and other serious illnesses. So the court said you have to stop this. And the court also contemplated imposing a penalty of almost one crore. At this point, Patanjali's lawyer said the advertisements will be taken down. They came back and said that they have been taken down, but it was found that that wasn't the case and it was still continuing, which is why the court this time has made some serious observations which include asking why Patanjali can't be hauled up for perjury. So what the court did was it said that personal appearance by Baba Ramdev and Balakrishna, who heads Patanjali, would be needed in court. So both of them were present in the Supreme Court, basically giving an undertaking to the court that this kind of advertisement will stop. Right. And after this, what did Patanjali do in response? So Patanjali's managing director, Balakrishna, has issued an unqualified apology to the Supreme Court that they will take down the misleading advertisements. But of course, this has come after the Supreme Court pointed out that its orders were still being violated. So the court did say that this apology is mere lip service if you haven't done the action, which is taking down those advertisements. So in an affidavit, they did express regret and said it was only meant to contain general statements, but inadvertently included these disparaging remarks and other misleading advertisement. So now in the next hearing, the court will have to see how this case of contempt will be taken forward. And Purva, have there been similar cases like this in the recent past as well? You know, false advertisement and disparaging remarks are a very common litigation, but not of this scale and not of this significance. You know, there are cases involving small companies, big companies before high courts across the country, especially where ASCAI, which is the Advertising Standards Council of India, would have uh, issued an order asking a particular ad to be taken down, for example. So the party would then come to court and this would be litigated. But on with a pharma company and with such grave consequences for what they are advertising, this is sort of unprecedented. And next we talk about Jeff Bezos's venture into space tourism. Blue Origin, a private space company owned by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, offers people a chance to experience space travel. Capable of accommodating a crew of six, Blue Origin's New Shepard is a reusable suborbital rocket system designed to take astronauts to space. Now, as a part of its 25th flight, Gopi Totakura, who lives in Atlanta, is said to become the first Indian to venture to space since Rakesh Sharma in 1984. To know more about space tourism and this mission, we have Indian Express's Anona Dutt joining us in this segment. So, Anona, can you begin by telling us what exactly is space tourism? 
So in the context that we are speaking, it's about the company Blue Origin, which is owned by the Amazon uh, owner, uh, Jeff Bezos. The company actually takes uh, people up to uh, space. It doesn't stay there. You experience the weightlessness for a few minutes and then you come back to Earth. And uh, this is uh, essentially to open up uh, space, not just for trained astronauts, but also for, say, you know, teachers and artists. Traditionally, you wouldn't have access to going to space. And Anona, what part of space does Blue Origin's New Shepard plan on taking the space tourists to? And what all will they get to experience? After the liftoff, the spacecraft travels past the Karman line, which is considered to be the boundary of space, so to say, outer space. It's about at around 80 to 100 kilometers in space. And once you reach there, you feel the zero gravity. The astronauts can then unbuckle, come out of their seats for a few minutes. And then again, after some time, you have to fasten your seatbelts and the craft comes back to Earth. And have similar space tourism flights taken off before as well? So yes, Blue Origins has done a few human space tourism flights, so to say, in the past. In fact, the first uh, flight carried uh, Jeff Bezos and his brother as uh, two of the passengers on the uh, spacecraft. And also uh, later on, uh, William Shatner, who's uh, known for playing Captain Kirk in Star Trek, uh, was also taken on one of the flights. Right. And Anuna, what kind of training and skills does a passenger of a space flight require? So essentially, the Blue Origin flights can house up to uh, six persons. And these six uh, people are trained for a couple of days on essentially how you would experience zero gravity, what kind of shocks that your system is likely to feel during the uh, liftoff and landing back on the Earth. Other than that, there isn't much regimented uh, training per se, which usually astronauts say with uh, NASA or even our own astronauts in the Gaganyan program are uh, undergoing. And India has been working on its own space mission, the Gaganyan. So how different would you say is that from a space flight by Blue Origin? So the Gaganyan mission, unlike the Blue Origins flight, Blue Origins is a touch and go mission. You go, you touch space and you come back. But Gaganyan will put at least two or three astronauts, the first from India, in space for a few days or a few orbits around the Earth. And they will conduct certain experiments. And the long-term plan is to have a sustained human spaceflight program, which uh, will eventually end with uh, India actually creating its own uh, space station. So when it comes to Gaganyan right now, before we actually send astronauts to space, we have to ensure that 100% it's a safe journey. For that, we have to do two unmanned missions before. And there will be several other tests that would be carried out on ground or with like a single stage uh, rocket called test vehicle. So all of these tests have to be done, but the timeline right now seems to be 2025 end for the human uh, mission. And talking about Indians in space, the upcoming flight by Space Origin will also have an Indian on board, Gopi Totakura. So talk to us about him. So Gopi Totakura is one of the six persons who would be traveling in the next Blue Origins flight. So he would technically become the first Indian in space after Rakesh Sharma who travelled with the Russian mission in 1984. Gopi is from uh, Visakhapatnam and has done a lot of his uh, education from Bangalore. He's a trained pilot and has flown several different types of uh, vehicles, including, I mean, he used to train in hot air balloons and gliders as well. So he has done a lot of flying and for him, he said that uh, this is like the next thing on the checklist going to space. He is no longer a full-time pilot. He runs a wellness company in Atlanta, USA. And uh, I mean, his father and him, they live there, uh, but he does have family still back in uh, southern India. And in the end, we talk about the Sam Petroda controversy. 
A day after the chairman of Indian Overseas Congress, Sam Petroda, was on the receiving end over his comments regarding the US inheritance tax, he issued a clarification saying that his statements were twisted and had nothing to do with the Congress party and their manifesto for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls. Sam Petroda, during a recent interview, had said that the inheritance tax in America was an interesting law and could be something that people could debate and discuss. Let me tell you, in America, there is an inheritance tax. So if, let's say, one has $100 million worth of wealth, and when he dies, he can only transfer probably 45% to his children. 55% is grabbed by government. Now, that's an interesting law. It says... You, in your generation, made wealth. You are leaving now. You must leave your wealth for public. Not all of it, half of it. Which to me sounds fair. In India, you don't have that. If somebody is worth 10 billion and he dies, his children get 10 billion. Public get nothing. And law says, you get half of it. Public gets half of it. So these are the kind of issues people will have to debate, discuss. I don't know what the conclusion would be at the end of the day. But when we talk about redistributing wealth, we are talking about new policies, new programs that are in the interest of the people and not in the interest of the The comments, people. however, faced backlash of the BJP with their spokesperson, Shehzad Poonawala, saying that the Congress wanted to grab everyone's hard-earned tax-paid resources. He said, quote, Congress, through Sam Petroda, the closest aide of Gandhi Vadra family, is essentially saying that 55% of what you earn will be taken away on your death. If you are a farmer, 55% of your land will be taken. If you are a businessman, 55% of your business will be taken. 55% of your savings you kept for your children. Unquote. However, clarifying the statements, Sam Petroda said, quote, Who said 55% will be taken away? Who said something like this should be done in India? Why is BJP and media in panic? Unquote. He also added that it was unfortunate that what he said as an individual on inheritance tax in the US is twisted by the media to divert attention from the lies the PM is spreading about the Congress manifesto. The Congress, while reacting to the controversy, said that sensationalizing his comments now and tearing them out of context are deliberate and desperate attempts at diverting attention away from Mr. Narendra Modi's malicious and mischievous election campaign. You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and produced by Shashank Bhargav and me, Niharika Nanda. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Audio and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress.com. 